All right, there's a bag of Funyuns, a bag of Doritos, one Coke, one Sprite, one Snickers, one Twix. Your total comes to forty-eight fifty. That's a hell of a markup. Costs a lot to keep the lights on. What are you lighting a stadium? You well, you know how it is running a small business. Yeah, I'm a small business owner myself. I own a comic shop. Oh yeah, which one? The really nice one downtown with the helpful employees, or the shitty one by the by the pig farm and the tire burning factory? The shitty one. Wow. Running a comic shop, it must be like a Kevin Smith film, am I right? Hanging out all day, talking pop culture, uh, coming up with your own catchphrases, stuff like that? No, it's not like that at all, actually. It's kind of mundane, yet surreal, depending on what day it is. Oh, that's too bad. I might have stopped by if you guys were doing the Kevin Smith thing. Now then, uh, anything else I can get for you? Yeah, let me get some cherry-flavored chapstick. Cherry? Huh. Wow. Yeah. Pretty slow today. No customers. Well, except for Donnie and the tumbleweed. Mondays are always slow. Yeah, they are. Today's Saturday, though. Is it? Wow. I had a gig last night DJing at Club Art Studio. It was crazy. I guess I'm still recuperating. Club Art Studio? Yeah, it's a relatively new club. It gets a lot of confused artists. And the art studio across the street is named The Lunch Counter. And the whole street is just a mess of bewildered, hungry artists wandering around not knowing where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I saw the pictures you posted. You know, I can't help but notice that I wasn't invited. Well, you know it was a work night. You have to wake up early the next day. We have to be here at the same time. I mean, you know, it's not really your scene, is it, Richard? You know, having fun. I have fun. Really? What'd you do last night? Last night? It involved tears and regret, didn't it? Those were tears of joy. Oh, and by the way, while scrolling through the social media for the shop, the social media of which you are in charge, I couldn't help but notice a distinctive lack of shop-related posts. I couldn't even find a photo of the shop. Have you seen the shop? We look like a crack house with a neon open sign. You've got photos of our competitor's shop. Their shop is amazing. It's clean, bright, friendly. You know, the total opposite of ours. Even their customers are more appealing. No offense, Donnie. It's okay. I'm aesthetically unpleasant. Great. You hurt Tumbleweed's feelings. So, what are you trying to say? You don't like how I handle our social media? No, I don't. I think you're more interested in plugging your DJ gigs in yourself than the shop. Yesterday you tweeted about 47 different tweets showing off a new pair of leather pants you bought. Excuse me, did you see those pants? Tell you what, how about we have a little friendly competition? Whoever drives more traffic to the shop is crowned winner and queen of social media. Uh, I think you mean king. I know what I said. Deal? Deal. There's a sobbing tumbleweed in the parking lot. What'd I miss? <sighs> well, wait, I've already decided. I don't give a shit. Oh, here are the snacks, by the way. Oh, you didn't have to get me anything, man. You asked me to get these. I did. Richard, you've gone from short-term memory loss to full-on brain damage. I mentioned I was going to go get snacks, and you were like, oh, dude, I'm so high on the reefer. Right now, bring me up some munchies from the sip and save, man. Is that what I sound like? I guess. I barely listen to you half the time. It's actually pretty spot on. Although you left out the spontaneous sobbing and murmuring of the ex-wife's name. Do you even remember giving me money for these? I gave you money for snacks? No. Uh, by the way, you owe me 20 bucks. Oh, fair enough. Hey, that's weird. I could have sworn I had 20 bucks in my wallet earlier. You'll owe me. So listen, I'm at the sip and save. I asked the clerk for a cherry chapstick and he goes, huh. Really? Huh. Yeah. He kind of pauses like he's considering it, and he goes, huh, just like that. Maybe it's not a popular flavor at his store, and he was taken aback. It's cherry! Cherry's the most popular flavor of anything. Lifesaver. Starburst. Skittles. Cold medication. Underwear. All right, I get it. So why did he say huh when you asked for cherry chapstick? That's what I intend to find out. You're not going back there, are you? You're not going to turn this into an Alex thing just because he made a small, probably involuntary, mild grunt? Let it go. I can't let it go, Tina. Don't you understand? It's gnawing at my soul. It's driving me mad. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Huh. Hey, look, someone left a whole bag of snacks on the counter. Scene change! Hey, 
Remember me? I was just in here a few minutes ago. Yeah, you're the guy who spent 50 bucks on junk food. You know, you really should take care of yourself. Once you get past 50, a bad diet can be really detrimental to your health. I'm 35. Really? Good lord, man. Uh, forget the diet. I bought cherry chapstick from you, and you made what I believe to be a homophobic sound of disapproval. Homophobic? Really? That's right. For some reason, you think buying cherry chapstick makes me gay. Well, I got news for you, buddy. I'm going to organize a boycott. I'm not homophobic. I'm gay. What? I'm gay. You sure? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Huh. So you want to do anything later? Meanwhile, back in the shop. So how's it going with our little social media challenge? You ready to call it quits or what? Ha! Far from it. I realize I don't have your aptitude with the social media, so I've decided to go it old school. No fancy, schmancy, cold, and personal tweets or Instagrams for me. I'm doing it analog. Word of mouth. Flyers. I gave Donnie some flyers, and he's downtown right now as we speak, passing them around. And how's the word of mouth going? Great. I've told three customers about the store. But they're already customers. Isn't the point of this to see who can bring in new customers? Yeah, but they'll tell their friends. Who probably already shop here. You know, I, I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work. You're trying to get in my head. Make me doubt myself? You're worried I'm going to win this thing. Oh, please. I'm like John Henry and you're the machine. Didn't John Henry die at the end of that story? You'd like that, wouldn't you? I mean, I wouldn't object. Fine, so let's hear your progress. Well, I convinced an Instagram follower in France to drape a banner with the name of the shop in lights across the Eiffel Tower. I got a nice tweet from Mick Jagger wearing one of my work shirts. Mick and I go way back. Oh, and this was nice. Colin Oates actually recorded a jingle I wrote for the shop, and it's already number five on the pop charts. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a text. Nope, make that number three on the pop charts. Well, I hope that's going to be enough to compete with you telling three people and having Donnie hand out a couple hundred flyers. Actually, I only had enough money to print out four flyers. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll be close. Oh, hey, Alex, how'd it go with that clerk at the Sip and Save? Uh, pretty good. It was all just a big misunderstanding, as a matter of fact. We're going on a date tonight. Oh, that's nice. Wait, hold on now. You're going on a what? I asked him out. Well, what'd you do that for? I couldn't help it. I accused him of being a homophobe, and when he told me he was gay, I felt like an idiot, so I panicked and asked him out. So, who's paying? Well, I figured we would split the check. No! You can't ask a guy to split the check on your first date. Why not? You asked him out, you have to pay. That's how it works. According to who? Steve Harvey? Maybe it's different in the gay community. You're not in the gay community. Well, apparently I am now. All right, I gotta go home and get ready. Be home by 11. Very funny. Transition music. So, yeah. You know, I couldn't believe you found a spaghetti taco place in Springdale. I've got a friend who's gonna be very happy when she hears the news. The low health rating keeps the crowds away, so it's very nice and intimate. Hey. I never let a thing like that keep me away from a good meal. I once ate a hot dog off of a men's room floor. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Do you often eat food off the men's room floor? Often, I wouldn't say often, but it's not every day you come across a free hot dog just lying around. On the men's room floor? That's repulsive. You know, I feel like I'm losing you here. It's a free hot dog. What am I supposed to do? Just leave it there? Maybe you hail from some magical fantasy land where hot dogs roam the plains like herds of bison. My store sells hot dogs. Did I not stress the free part? I feel as though I did. Meanwhile, back at the shop. Hey, Tina, we really need to go to the bank and get some change. What do we need? Uh, everything? We're completely out of money. Did you check the emergency change bag? Yeah, it was filled with Skittles, twigs, bottle caps, rubber bands, clumps of grass, and one euro. I don't know how many times I've told Alex that we don't use the euro in this country. Oh, listen to this. I got a follower in Beijing to spray paint Close Encounters comics on the Great Wall of China. Whoa. Yeah, he got shot before he could finish, though. Not sure how that's going to affect my score. Still, it's preferable to doing time in a Chinese prison. You do not want to do time in a Chinese prison. Were you ever... Yeah, no, no I, I've heard things. Oh, also, in about 20 minutes, every single busker in every single subway station, bus stop, and street corner in the world will simultaneously sing our store jingle, with all the proceeds going to provide fashionable clothes for the underprivileged. Wow, that's just... And Hall and & Oates won a Grammy for their cover of our jingle. Isn't that great? They made a best jingle category just for my song. So how's it going on your end? 
Well, I've experienced a minor setback. Donnie got mugged and they burned his flyers. Oh no, that's awful. Tell me about it. The money I spent on those flyers. Did they catch the guys who did it? Yeah, remember the three customers I mentioned earlier? The ones from your word of mouth campaign? Turns out they had beef with Donnie and just happened to bump into him downtown. Look at the bright side. Maybe they can spread the word in prison, and when they get out in three to five years, your strategy will actually pay off. So, I've only succeeded in luring criminals to our shop. Great. So, I guess this means you win? I guess it does. Huh. We didn't agree on any terms. Do I owe you anything? I think I got a 20 in my wallet, or I can give you some Skittles from the emergency change bag. No, that's fine. Honestly, just knowing that your spirit is broken is reward enough for me. You can also call me Your Majesty. Well, if it isn't Springdale's most in-demand bachelor. <laughs> How'd your big date go? He's disgusted by me. Because you're stringing him along by pretending to be romantically interested in him so he won't think you're a homophobe? Okay, we're at dinner. Oh, by the way, there's a new spaghetti taco place in town. <laughs> and we get to talking, and, and I think things took a turn for the worse when I mentioned I ate a hot dog off a men's room floor. Ew! Tina, free hot dog! What's a hot dog doing in the men's room anyway? That's your takeaway from this? It's a legitimate question. Is it a common occurrence to find half-eaten hot dogs lying around? I once found a cold bowl of vegetable soup in the bathroom once. Did you eat it? I didn't even get close. Alex body-checked me into the hand dryer like a hockey player and gulped it down. Am I the only one who gets excited at the prospect of free food? Sorry, Alex. I'm just not as enamored of the idea of men's room cuisine as you are. Well, on the bright side, this guy doesn't think you're a homophobe anymore. No, just an open-minded guy who eats food off men's room floors. At least you're not going out with him again. Well, actually... Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Alex, you're not gay! Oh, don't get me wrong, you're quite the sexual omnivore. I once walked in on him making love to a foot-long Reuben. The sandwich or the person? Never mind. My point is, Alex, is that you're not what we would call relationship gay. Why don't you just quit while you still have a little bit of dignity left? Why? I'll tell you why. Who the hell does this guy think he is? That's why. He doesn't think I'm good enough to go out with him? Because I eat the occasional bit of food off the floor? Because I may have brought up the fact that I like dangerous, dirty sex in public places like churches, libraries, truck stops. So you're going to continue to chase someone you're not interested in solely out of spite? Yes! You are so damaged. Yes, I am! Hey, let me get some twigs. I'm going to go get a coat from the machine. G chord! Hey! Alex, w w what are you doing here? Oh, what? I can't shop here anymore? You don't return my calls. And now you're telling me where I can and cannot shop? Listen, uh, um... You never bothered to learn my name, did you? Quick, without looking at my name tag. What's my name? Uh, Dirk. Dirk? Dirk the Clerk? You think my name is Dirk the Clerk? Clerk Kent? It's Mark. My name is Mark. You sure it's not Mark? Eh? Eh? What do you want? I think things ended rather abruptly the other night. Yeah, about that. Listen, I would... It was, the, it was the hot dog story, wasn't it? I knew it. No, no, I mean, it didn't really help your case. Well, what was it? I'm not really gay. What? I'm not actually gay. I felt guilty for judging you when you bought the cherry chapstick, so I panicked and said I was gay so that you wouldn't think I was a homophobe. Wow. What kind of person would do such a thing? I'm outraged. Outrage! You should be ashamed of yourself, clerk. It's Mark. And and then I found out your name's not even clerk. What else are you lying about? You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take this giant bag of barbecue chips as restitution. I guess it's the least I can do. And this too. Whoa. Hold up. It's not like I murdered your family. Maybe hot dog. Maybe you should go. Fair enough. Killing Time is paid for by a grant from Richard's Drug Dealer. Written by Richard Werder and Tina Leach. Starring Richard Werder, Tina Leach, and Alex Humphrey. Oh, wow. What was all that about, you don't mind me asking? It's a long story. That's going to be it for you. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me get some of that cherry chapstick there. Cherry? Huh. <laughs>